Hello everyone, I'm Reinhardt. For those of you who don't know me, I'm with Bitmovin since quite a while. And today I'm talking about going beyond bitrate and uh, more specifically adaptation based on video context in comparison to video bitrate, I would say. So, um, yeah, benefits, benefits of this whole approach, uh, what you can expect in the near future, and what you should take with you from my talk today. So, quality matters. I think that's uh, a fair statement, and everyone in the room should be aware about that. And besides a low startup delay and avoiding stores, delivering a high video quality is definitely key in today's online video streaming scenarios. But encoding configurations, and I'm talking about bit rates and resolutions, are defined to provide acceptable, good, stunning, whatever you want to call it, uh, quality for every video. And they want to do it uh, in the same way for every video. And that's the problem. So there is a, a question uh, which we should ask. Is 5,800 kilobits per second enough to deliver excellent 1080p encodes? And depending on who you ask, you will get as answer yes, probably if their encoders wouldn't sustain more. You might get no, but the correct answer in my opinion is it depends. And it depends. Um, different content types uh, come with individual bit necessities. So if you think of cartoons, for instance, uh, they're quite easy content, low complexity scenes. And if we think about 5,800 kilobits per second, it might be enough for cartoons, or it might be even too much for cartoons. Versus action movies, where Arnold Schwarzenegger is kicking ass, for instance, you have super high complexity, a lot of motion is going on, what we would call a very complex, uh, seen, then 5,800 kilobits per second won't be that much anymore. Um, so what we get out of this observation is definitely that one size fits all bitrate letters are not reflecting these different types of content. And that's why some smart people came up with it, what it's called per title encoding. And although I guess you're familiar with that, uh, in a nutshell, it's um, more or less tweaking your encoding recipe to uh, the type of content. So for cartoons, for low complexity movies, you might not need that much bits and you reduce your bitrate setting for higher, uh, more complex content like action movies, you would spend a little bit more on bits. And at this point, I want to uh, briefly show back to, to day morning where Mark said and talked about the color mapping they did and that they didn't do it on uh, a per video approach. So they do not take the entire video into account because that wouldn't be sufficient. They do it on a per scene level. And also in this context, we would like to ask, but wouldn't it be better to apply this per title encoding approach to every individual scene? And I definitely think it would be. And that's why we introduced what we call per scene adaptation. And it's not uh, making the client aware of the video bitrate. Of course, we do that as well. But it's more making the client aware of the quality of every single scene. And if you uh, take a look at what a uh, online video player and ABR player looks like, uh, it comes down to this uh, ABR part which uses different kind of metrics to define what's uh, the best segment to download next. On the one hand side, we have the connection, so the actual bandwidth. Uh, we also have probably buffer levels, which we'd want to take into account, and we have some historical data probably. And this um, adaptation logic is now extended with a very important additional value, which is quality metadata. And this quality metadata is directly derived from the video encoder. So what needs to be done? First start on the server side. 
obviously extract the quality data during the encoding on a per chunk base. And you can use metrics like uh, BSNR, SSIM, VMF, or any other. Um, we implement it in a way that we make use of several different metrics and derive what we call a quality indicator out of that. And this quality indicator is then saved and encapsulated and delivered with the content itself. This can be done on various different uh, methods, like uh, including it into the container itself or having it into the manifest, playlist, or even use sidecar files. So that's it on the server side, pretty much. What needs to be done on the client side, obviously, is that we need to extract the information out of the content and process the quality data, forward it to our ABR unit of the player. And now the player can take this information into account, which results in low complexity scenes can be replaced by lower bitrate segments. And that doesn't mean uh, you will see uh, the big buck bunny in the next expandables. It means that we simply replace higher bitrate segments with lower bitrate segments of the same scene, but without losing any perceptual quality. That sounds a little bit uh, confusing, but if we look at that, although the headline is not there, um, you see the above graphic shows a standard adaptation behavior. For the sake of simplicity, we only have three bit rates, three quality levels, one, two, and three megabits. And if we look at this part, which reflects a very simple, low complex scene, a normal player, a normal ABR logic would simply sustain the same quality if the bandwidth conditions sustain it. On the other hand side, in comparison, when we look at our quality aware adaptation behavior, if the quality aware adaptation behavior detects a low bitrate scene or a low complexity scene, we would switch down to one embed in this scenario while maintaining the same perceptual quality. So the user won't notice. The only thing we have is that we save bandwidth. And this is pretty nice if you think of CDN costs, but it's also nice because we can use this kind of saving probably later on when it comes to more complex scene where we can sustain a higher quality, uh, although the bandwidth might be lower. So the benefits obviously deliver the same or even a better experience while losing uh, less bandwidth. That's a goal everybody wants to achieve, especially if you think about mobile scenarios, for instance. And if you um, have a look at this bitrate graph, it shows the orange line as a standard adaptation behavior, pretty boring, at 10 Mbit straight. And our Pacine adaptation logic switches up and down according to the complexity of the scene. And if you check out this last scene on the picture, I mean, you probably won't see it, but I'm telling you, it's quite low complexity, almost black, without motion, and our approach switches down to only a fraction of what a standard ABR logic would choose. And not only uh, providing uh, or using less bandwidth, also with this technique we can avoid stores by predicting high bitrate scenes in the future. And clients which are not able to read this kind of quality information are nevertheless able to stream the video like it was before. Probably also worth mentioning that this approach is not depending on any special codec and or container format and is agnostic to them. So as I guess I'm running out of time, we skip the perspective. You can assume it will be even better in the future. And uh, for conclusion, uh, please take with you, uh, if you don't already know it, that there is no optimal encoding configuration for all types of content. We cannot go for a one-fits-all bitrate ladder. And what we introduced and we call per scene adaptation delivers a higher quality under low bandwidth conditions for every scene. Thank you.